chapter 1 to 7. Paul, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God, <clears throat> which he had promised afore by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. Concerning his son Jesus Christ, our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead, by whom we have received grace and apostleship of obedience to the faith among all nations for his name among whom are also called of Jesus Christ. To all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God, our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Father God in heaven, we come to you today to praise and worship your holy name, Lord. Lord, we thank you for being able to come here and offer praises to you, Father. For you are the great. I am, Lord. Lord, we love you, Lord. We can't do anything without you, Lord. And we are so thankful, Father, that you woke us up to see you today. Lord, we depend on you for everything, Father. We know that you're always there. No matter what, Father, we can always come to you. We thank you, Lord, for protection. Lord, we thank you so much for bringing us through this pandemic, Lord. Lord, we thank you for safety, Lord. Father, we thank you for our families. Father, we give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Now, Father, we ask that you bless, continue to bless and be in the church and strengthen her, Lord. Lord, we ask you that you bless Pastor Davis, Sister Davis, and their family, Lord. Lord, as we stand here, we just want to say thank you, Lord, because you've been so good, Lord. Even when we didn't, we didn't, we didn't, we needed it, Lord, but we didn't know how to ask. So we just thank you, Lord. We thank you for your goodness, Lord. Now, Father, we ask that Pastor Davis come and give us a word from on high. Lord. Lord, we pray that our heart and our mind is receptive to the word, Lord. We carry this word out and spread it, Lord, so someone who does not know you, who has forgotten about you, will come back to you, Lord. Lord, we thank you. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.
and he is the awesome king. He is the great God. Did you come to celebrate him today? I came to celebrate him today. I came to bless his name. I came to, to lift him up. I showed up to praise him this morning. Did you show up to praise him? In the midst of your sadness, in the midst of your things that's going on around you, I come to lift up the name Jesus. His name is Jesus. He is the righteous. He's the righteous son of God. There is none like my Lord. His name is Jesus. There is none like him. And we've come to ask the question, how great, how great is my God? I want to just give you an answer. The answer is there is no God like him. He is the great God. He is the great thing. There's no one like God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Thank you, Paul, for reminding us that we serve the awesome, the anointed grace of God. It is God himself. We thank him again for blessing us. We thank him for keeping us. I call your attention to the book of Psalms. Psalm number one. I'm sorry, Psalm number 73. Maybe I just preached from 1 to 73. This is grand opening, right? <laughs> Psalm to 73, one person shake their head and say, you'll be here all by yourself. <laughs> well, I'm driving, so Sister Davis has to hang out with me. <laughs> Psalm number 73, Psalm number 73, I want to, to, to read a few verses here. I'll be skipping around Psalm 73. Psalm number 73. I want to read verses 1 through 3, verses 16 through 18, and verses 27 and 28. Psalm 1 through 3 says, Truly God is good to Israel, to such as a pure, to such as are in pure in heart. But as for me, my feet have almost stumbled. My steps had nearly slipped, for I was envious of the boastful or the foolish or the wicked when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. Verse 16 through 18, when I thought how to understand this, it was too painful for me until I went into the sanctuary of God. Yes, yes until I went into the sanctuary of God. Then I stood, I understood therein. Surely you set them in slippery places. Yeah. You cast them down to destruction. Verses 27 and 28. For indeed those who are far from you shall perish. You have destroyed all those who desert you for harlotry. But it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God. Yes. That I may declare all your works. Amen. I want to talk about the revelation at heaven. The revelation at church the revelation of heaven at church. The revelation of heaven at church. The revelation of heaven at church. Today the world, the world in which we live, have come to the conclusion that we don't need old-fashioned church as we have today. We find ourselves compromising. And the pandemic has added to it. We've spent, some of you have spent two years or more outside the walls of this building. And surely you can watch church 
on TV. You can watch church on the internet. Yeah, yeah. You can even watch church on your secular phone. But this text today will declare that there's a need to show up at the building. Yes, sir. Yeah, I know. I hear all of the excuses all the time. The pandemic is raging. And that is true. A new strain comes out every now and then. And certainly those who are physicians are trying to figure it out. But I want to let you know that the church is not manufacturing COVID-19. I just want to let you know that sporting events are super spreaders. I want to let you know that parties and hanging out with friends and giving your little baby his first year, first party of the year. First time COVID-19 are not evading those parties. COVID-19 is real. Yes, sir. I've heard it. I've heard every conversation. I've heard every excuse, but today in Psalm 73, the psalmist discredit every excuse that we can have. The Hebrew writer picks this thought up in Hebrews chapter 10, verses 24 through 25, and the Hebrew writer declares that we ought to all come together. Every now and then, we ought to get together to fellowship one to the other. Yes, sir. Every now and then, we need to understand that God gives us 168 hours a week. And many cannot even come to the conclusion to give God two hours. Look at God. Look at how God blesses us in spite of us. In spite of our meanness. In spite of our cruelty. In spite of us acting a fool, Monday through Saturday, God has still given us breath to breathe. God is allowing our heart to pump blood to every extremity of our body. Let me just share with you, God is good. Amen. And, and he's not good to us, Brother Miles, because, because we've been good to him. He's not good to us, Brother Whitlock, because we've been so faithful to him. He is good to us because God is good. The same God, the same God that allowed you to, to sleep all night and, and hang out in your bed and, and back home, they would say it like this. They would say that, thank God that the bed I laid on was not my cooling room. And I thank God that the sheets I, I wrapped up in was not my winding sheet. What the senior saints were saying to us is, I thank God and I appreciate God for, for what God is doing for me because I could have been dead. I could have been sleeping in my grave. But God saw fit to make death behave. Justice came running. And justice is when we are taken out for what we should have done. But mercy spread it toward us and gave us another chance. Yeah, justice should have killed us off. Justice should have, should have, have, have sent us, us to death. But mercy came running. And thank God for his amazing grace. It is God's grace that has kept us. It is God's grace that keeps us. And it is God's grace that makes us who we are. In Psalm 73, the psalmist picks up this thought. And the psalmist is really going through a depressed moment. Have you ever been depressed? Have you ever been discouraged? <laughs> have you ever been at a point when you thought that God should have done something a lot differently and God chose not to do what you wanted him to do and you got sick and tired of God? Anybody been there? Have you ever been to a point in your life where, where life was going so well and all of a sudden it looked like they snatched the rug out from under you? Have you ever been with a person that, that, that's really got it going on and they're your friend and all of a sudden your friend turns their back on you? 
Have you ever been to a point in your life where the psalmist is right here? The psalmist says, my feet was almost gone. My steps had well nigh slipped. The psalmist declares, even though I'm in a moment of depression, I realize one thing and I realize that thing really well. He says in verse number one of Psalm 73, God is good. He came to the conclusion, you see, regardless of, of what you go through, regardless of how bad things may sound or may be in your life, you must conclude that God is good. It's God, this God, the God, almighty God, God Elohim, God, the one that, that knows all and sees all. He is the supremative God. He's the supernatural God. He came to the conclusion, God is good. He says, God is good to Israel. God, God is just the good God. He's not a good God. He's not with a good God. He is the good God. He says, even though I'm going through some stuff, even though things are not what I really wanted them to be in 2021, and God is allowing the months and the days and the weeks to flee right before our eyes. Young people, maybe it's me. At 58, it looks like the world is on a spinning top. It looks like I just woke up last morning and I had to get back up this morning. It seems like the days, it looks like just yesterday, it was January 1st. And now it's already December 12th. So Henry, you can relate to me, can't you? You can relate, can't you? You, you can relate. That it seems like this world is on a merry-go-round and we just can't get off. It seems like the world is going so fast. Just a few days ago, we didn't have internet. But now we're able to see things in the flicker of a button. We're able to present stuff around the world in a just a moment. Let me tell you, I still conclude that God is good. You ought to relax, you ought to relax in this moment. You ought, to, you ought to get to a point where you conclude also that God is good. How do you know he's good, preacher? Because you're still here. And you don't deserve to be here. I'm just going to tell you, I, I burned out my second chance a long time ago. I wasn't even a toddler and I burned out my second chance. God just keeps giving me another chance. You see me standing here on Sunday. You see me dressed up like this on Sunday. You see me with my hair combed on, I mean, used to be combed on Sunday. It's not because I've been good. It's only because God is good. The psalmist doesn't say that God was good. Even though he speaks in the past tense, he doesn't say that God was good. He says that God is good. I want to let you know today we need to understand regardless of what goes on, regardless of who we hang out with, regardless of who walks off and leaves us, God is still good. The psalmist declares that he's certainly good to those who have a pure heart. Those whose hearts are, are turned toward him. Those who have no malice in their heart. Those who, who do not uh, envy after others. God certainly is good to them. Those who do what they do because they have the right motives. I want to tell you God is good to you. He says not only is he good because we have a pure heart. He's good because he kept me alive. Then verse number two, he says to us in, in Psalm 73, he says, but as for me, now he realized that God is good. He realized that God is so good that God keeps the whole nation of Israel. Let me tell you, these last five years, if it had not been for God on our side, you'll get that when you get home. If it had not been for God on our side, we all would be ball in balls and chains. All of us in the room would be in balls and chains today if it had not been for the Lord Amen. Amen. on our side. Amen. 
But God, God in his infinite wisdom, he made evilness stand down. And the, the crazy thing about it, those who are wicked, those who are evil, don't even see that God is just using them in the scenario that's leading toward heaven. God, 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 God used, God, God used Judas yes, to get us where we are. Yes, yes. God used the child of perdition to get us where we are now. Right. And the amazing thing is, those who are being used by God don't even know they're being used by God. That's right. Such as it is with those who are being used by the devil. Yeah. They have no clue that the devil is used <laughs> I mean, they wake up in the morning, do the same old thing, mistreat people, oppress people, disappoint people, make sure they snatch people's jobs out from under them. They make sure that you have no health care. I have concluded that every senator, every representative in the state and in the nation ought to have the same insurance they vote on us to have. They ought to have HMOs if they want us to have HMOs. They ought to have PPOs if they want us to have PPOs. It's amazing to me that the wicked that's being used by the devil are so blinded that they can't even see it. And then after you're wicked for so long, you just enjoy being wicked. <laughs> you just bear down on more wickedness. You look for ways to, to disturb people. There are some things that the governor didn't even have to touch. But he looked for ways to depress people. He looked for ways to eliminate your vote. He, he looked for ways to make sure you don't make choices that he doesn't agree with. He looks for ways to make sure you don't make ends meet. But so, so God is not asleep. And he doesn't have to make a list and check it twice. <laughs> The God we serve is, is omniscience. He's omniscient. He knows everything before it even happens. He's handling business behind the scene. And because he's handling business behind the scene, let them go on and do what they want to do. Let them handle it the way they want to handle it. Don't get to what a psalmist says. The psalmist declares in verse number two, my feet had almost stumbled. The psalmist declares that my feet has almost given up. The psalmist declares I got one foot in the grave and another foot on a banana peel. I'm just about to fall in here. If you're at that point today, just hold your hope. Just wait just a minute. Just, just don't give up right now. Don't give out right now. Don't give in right now. The psalmist declares because the psalmist is where you are. And the psalmist declares, my feet was almost gone. The psalmist declares, my steps had nearly slipped. The psalmist says, I was about to give up. He says, I was about to give in. He says, I was about to give out. He said, this thing was so crazy to me. Have you woke up in the morning, Sister Woods, and you see something that's just crazy? CNN, ABC, CBS, NBC, and all the rest of the, the stations that's trying to fake it like they're major stations. You can wake up in the morning, Sister Richard, and things just go wild and crazy. Beyonce and the OJ says it like this. I went to bed last night, and I was on the top of the world. But I woke up this morning, and the world was on top of me. Yes, have you been there? Yes. Have, have you been so down and out that you couldn't even pray? Yes. Have you been so down and out that you couldn't even call on the Lord? Yes. Have you been so down and out that you didn't want to pray? Yes. Have you been so down and out until you didn't even want to hear what God had to say, what your counselor had to say, what your therapist had to say? You just want to throw up your hands and holler and forget it all. Yes. That's what a psalmist is. The psalmist declares, my feet were almost gone, my steps had well not slipped, and he gives the reason for it in verse number three. He says, for I was envious of the boastful. He was envious of the foolish. He was envious of the foolish. That means that he wanted to be like the foolish. He wanted to be like the boastful. 
And the reason why is because when he saw their prosperity, the prosperity of the wicked, he wanted to be like them. You see, everything that shines, everything that glitters is not gone. Just because it has a, a nice exterior. Sister, just because he has a voice like Barry White. Okay, I got to get down to the ground where some of you who are under 40. Let me see. It, back because he has a singing voice like Teddy, Teddy Pendergrass. Okay. Just because he raps like Zay Z. Just because he can draw a crowd like Travis Scott. Doesn't mean that that's your hookup. All right. All right. As a matter of fact, sister, the Bible says that he ought to find you. That's right. I, I remember, I remember just before, just before Sister Davis' days, uh, Sister Hughes, just before Sister Davis' days, and Sister, uh, I, I just kind of walked her to the car that day after a function, after a church function. <laughs> As a church function, as a, a church function, I just I just walked into the car, Sister Taylor. I just walked into the car, and right as she got in the car, she rolled her window down. She said, "Hey, what's up with you?" <laughs> she she wasn't she wasn't talking about was I cold standing out there walking her to the car in the middle of February. She, she, she wasn't talking about Brother Whitlock. She, she wasn't talking about what was really going on with me. Uh, she wanted to know from me, Sister Davis, what's up with you? All right. Sister Rodriguez, you, you, you understand, don't you? You understand the sister in our language wanted to know. She didn't speak Spanish. She didn't speak Greek. She just asked me in plain, simple language, what's up with you? She had her Mac on. She had her rap on. But let me tell you, sisters, a man is to find you even in the 21st century. Because you, you, you are like a pearl. And, and men ought to have to dig deep to find pearls. You are special. You are different. Somebody loves you. God loves you. And because God put the treasures down in the deep, let him find you. And when he finds you, make sure he wears the belt with his britches up. When he finds you, when, when he finds you, make sure he got a decent conversation and he can put together a two-line sentence. When he finds you, make sure that he got some goals in life because it takes a spiritual man to lead a spiritual woman. What's up with you? So when he finds you, make sure he doesn't have the same lame line that Brother Miles used back in the film. <laughs> when he said, baby, where you going? <laughs> Wherever you going, I want to go too. <laughs> make sure he doesn't use the same line Brother Dixon used back in the film. <laughs> oh, baby, heaven must be missing the angel. <laughs> Because you're right here with me. Make sure he has a, a conversation that leads to prosperity. Before even the conversation, you need to check him out on his way to you. Just because he got both legs doesn't mean he's a good man. Oh, look at how he walks. I told you, I told you that sisters got lines these days too. Sisters, 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 in the midst of the pandemic, when when they have their mask on, they talk to you with their eyes. They know how to blink them. They know how to skirt them. And then they know how to walk away. where they can leave a lingering effect in your life. 
And don't mention the right perfume, the, the right hairstyle. Let me tell you, she can have a different hairstyle every day now. Because they spend money on a hairstyle when they won't spend money on food. When you met her, you I mean, it was down below her shoulder when you met her. And you wait and catch an in-between appointments. She got a bob haircut. I mean, and, and she the voice sounds the same, the body looks the same, but 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 something has escaped her. And but the next day, it was long and sleek, and now it's curly and rolled. So you can't put faith in that. But the psalmist declares, I was envious of them. I wanted to be like them. My feet had almost slipped. My steps were almost gone. I was envious of the foolish and of the boastful. He says, they, have, they were prosperous. The wicked can prosper. I say to you, young man, young woman, if it's not yours, leave it alone. If it's not yours, don't touch it. If it's laying there, don't mess with it. Whatever you do, don't, don't misuse God's blessings and take on a curse. I, I never will forget, Mama, Mama painted a big picture before us. And we, we grew up in the backwoods of Mississippi, didn't have very much, and if we found a dollar, we kept it. But there was a woman, uh, she was like 87 years old. She had gone to the bank, and she left the bank, and set her box of money on the top of her car. And she drove off in Bellzona, Mississippi. And my mama picked up the box of money that had slid down the road. She brought it to the house, way out in the country. We, I mean, no one would come out there looking for her. Took the money, way out in the country, and you know dad, dad didn't frequent the church very often, so dad said, look what the Lord has already done. $33,000. Cash. $33,000. And in the 70s, Sister Nanlaw, you know how much $33,000 was? It was worth $33,000. Well, Daddy got all holy that night, all sanctimonious and praising the Lord. I've never seen him praise the Lord like that before. He said, look what God has blessed us with. And Mama said, no, there's got to be a name and a number in here somewhere. She ran that woman down and gave her $33,000 back. She said, it's not even worth the taking, taking a reward for it. Just do the right thing and God can bless you. That, that stuck with me. That stuck with me. Now, if, I, if, if, if mama can take back $33,000, I ought, to, I, ought to, I ought to make sure that I don't, I don't skirt and cheat on $5. There are folks that take their children to the play and take their children to, to the theme park, and because the children are short, they'll tell the child, oh, they're 10 years old. And the child says, no, I'm 12. <laughs> because the difference is $1.50. So they, they will mess over their lives over $1.50 just so, just so, just so they can make it over $1.50. And by the time they get home, they done lost $50. $400. Or their car breaks. That, that's, why, that's why we ought to give tithes and offerings. Oh, y'all just walked me right into that. Y'all said, mm-hmm, I heard you say, mm -hmm. That's why we ought to give tithes and offerings because God has blessed us with it all and we ought to return back to God at least 10%. Because God keeps us, even though he may not give you the money that you just gave back, he will give you health and wealth. He will give you what you never even dreamed of. The psalmist says, I looked at the wicked. They wouldn't give it, but they would take it. The psalmist, Asaph, the reason why Asaph could, could see the prosperity of the wicked is because he was a collector. 
He went from house to house and he collected their taxes and he saw what they drove. He saw how they lived. He saw how they were digging the scene with the gates to leave. Ooh, ooh, diamonds in the back, sun rooftop, TV antenna. That's too old for you, I see. <laughs> he saw what they were living like. And he looked at these wicked, ungodly people and he come to the conclusion that there is no pains. This word P-A-N-G is really pains in the English word. There were no pain in their death. Their loved ones could die if they eat chicken and go on down the road. There was no remorsing. There was, there was no mourning. They just moved on down the road. These guilty people, these wrong people, had no pains in their death. There was no trouble for what they did. They stole, but there was no trouble. They didn't even have plagues in their houses. They didn't even die from sickness like some folk did. They were proud, they were violent, they, they misused people, and they had an abundance of blessings, what they call blessings. They had an abundance of everything they needed. They were scoffing at God, they, they spoke against God, they spoke against heaven. They had more than they even wished. These are evil people. They would scheme and get what they want. And they set themselves against heaven. They set themselves against God. They even asked those who follow God, the godly. What, look at verse number 11. He, they asked the question, how does God know? How does God know? How does God, the most high God, how does he know? Foolishness. Number one, he is the most high God. He is the one who knows everything and sees everything. He is God himself. And they are foolish enough to ask the question, how does God know? How does, how does God deal with our riches? How does, how does your God handle these things? How do you get to this point where, where you serve him? And then in verse number 11, he closes out by saying, is the knowledge of the, of the most high God, does he have any? Does this God even have knowledge? You see, people can't praise the God that they can't see. People cannot honor the God that doesn't talk to them directly in the flesh. People cannot have faith in God, but just check this out. God has a way of blessing us in spite of us. He gave us another chance. He gave us another chance today. There was, some, there was a science teacher speaking, and this science teacher said that, that he didn't believe in God. He said he didn't believe in God because you can't see him. You can't feel him. And scientists think they're really smart, you know. You know, they think they're really, they think they really got it down. They, you can't see him. You can't feel him. And so the students were even smarter than the teacher. The students say, you don't have a brain. He said, yes, I do. He said, well, can you see it? The student asked the question, well, can you feel it? Well, how do you know you have a brain? Because I can think. He said, no, God thinks for you. So we have men, even in the 21st century, that's talking about God is not a pure God. I'm talking a revelation from heaven in church. So the psalmist declares in verse number 16, when I thought about all this evilness, and I thought about how these people live their lives, and I thought about how prosperous they were, then this was too devastating for me. This was too painful for me. I didn't understand this stuff. How does God let this happen? Have you ever asked God, God, how do you let that happen? When I first came to New Beginning, I asked God the question. God, how do you let them be deacons? God, how do you let that happen? God, how do you let people lead a group of people? with such bitterness and hatred in their heart. And there is somebody in your life that you're wondering, how do you let this happen? Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Uh, uh, Miss Clinton still trying to figure out how God let that happen in 2016. 
She just came out this week with a, with a statement. <laughs> She's still figuring out, how God, how do you let this happen? He says that these things were not understandable to me. It was too painful for me. And then it says in verse 17, until I went into the sanctuary of God. He said, I saw all this stuff going on. I didn't understand it. I couldn't reason through it. But when I went to church, he didn't say when he went to the internet. <laughs> he didn't say what he heard on Twitter. He didn't say what somebody emailed him. He said, it wasn't until I went to the church of God, until I went into the sanctuary, that I really understood what was really going on. Let me tell you this, there's hope in the sanctuary. There's strength in the church. He says, he says until I went to the, the, the sanctuary of God, then I understood their end. He understood their end. He goes on to say in verse 18, surely... Surely God, surely you God, surely you set them in slippery places. Look what the psalmist goes. He goes from a slippery place in himself to them, the evil ones, falling into slippery places. They set themselves against God. They set themselves against the church. And now they're in slippery places. The Rolls Royces are gone. The Jaguars are gone. The gated communities are gone. And let me stop right here for somebody who said that preacher don't want us to have anything. Let me just tell you, God wants you to have everything. He wants you to enjoy everything. Let me just tell you, just because you poor and broke, you ain't going to heaven. Because you poor and broke, that's not a license to get into heaven. Matter of fact, God wants you to be prosperous right here on planet Earth. He wants you to wear what you want to wear uh, within reason. He wants you to eat what you want to eat. He wants you to live where you want to live. He wants you to go where you want to go. God, God supports you being prosperous. But the evil ones, the wicked ones, the boastful ones that brag about who they are, what they have, and what God will never do to them, God is going to place their feet in slippery places. He says, he says, he says to America, even today, just wait and watch. Just keep looking. Mm -hmm. Just keep living. Mm -hmm. Watch what happens. I mean, police officers storm the Capitol. Mm -hmm. Police officers fighting against police officers. Mm -hmm. They are willing, because of their racism and their prejudiceness, they are willing to take a chance on losing their job, and most of them did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Put their family in a dire strait. They want to make sure that you understand I hate you to the utmost. Mm -hmm. Just keep living. The bully on the playground will be taken out. Just keep living. The, 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 the homeowners that, 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 that escalate your rent, just keep living. Watch them. Whenever a hurricane comes, I mean, two by fours will begin to triple, double, and sometimes quadruple. Planks and boards that you need, they begin to, to in, invoke the process of, of the law of supply and demand. But just keep living. God is watching. And God is on the throne. And, and God is not check, making a list and checking it twice. The boy that dumped you for no apparent reason, that misused you and took advantage of you, just keep living. The girl who said, because you didn't have this and didn't have that, just keep living. God is yet on the throne. Yes. Amen. Amen. And God is going to bring, it says in verse number 18, that God cast them in down into destruction. They are headed for destruction. You, you, don't, you don't even have to hate on them. You don't have to fight against them. They're headed for destruction. In verse number 27 and 28, he's come to this conclusion now. He's gone through his pity party. Have you ever had a pity party? He, he has, he's gone through his pity party. Tell your friend, baby, get out of that party. I ain't coming. Dude, dude, come on, man. Man up. Get out of that pity party. I'm not coming. So after he had his pity party, he came to himself. He says, for indeed those who are far from 
you shall perish. You have destroyed all those who desert you for holotry. This word holotry means prostitution. It, it, means, it means those who, who are going out doing things just so they can get a dollar. God is going to turn them over. And I'm not talking about just sexual prostitution. I'm talking about, I'm talking about representatives and senators who say they make $7,800 a year, but they're rich. God has a way of bringing them back in. God will destroy those who desert God for filthy lucre. I might as well tell you the truth. God is going to deal with preachers. Boy, I'm about to get a lot of amens now. I'm, I'm about to, I mean, folks get around and run around this room now. God is going to deal with preachers that put money over souls. God is going to deal with preachers who, who, whose wardrobe is more expensive than their library. God is going to deal with, with those of us who are Christians, who say we are Christians, but we can't listen to the Bible, we can't study the Bible, we can't read the Bible, but we say we're Christians. God is going to deal with us. He says, I went to the church of the Lord. Now I understand it. And finally he says, but it is good for me to draw near to God. You need to conclude today that it's a good thing for you to draw near to God. I put my trust in the Lord that I may declare all his works. So is it worth going to church? Is it worth being in church? Is it worth being at church? The psalmist declares, is at the church. Yeah, is at the church, is at the church that life is meaningful. Is at the church that messages are preached to change the world. Is that the church that we go out and we do missions? Is that the church that miracles take place? Is that the church that deliverance take place? I hear you. You can celebrate God any way you want to. But the Bible says that we ought not forsake the assembly of ourselves together at the church. Is that the church that God's power resides? Is that the church that compassion lives? Is that the church that communion takes place? Is that the church that hope is renewed? Is that the church that character is made the better? Is that the church that patience exists? Is that the church that faith is renewed? Is that the church that the faithfulness one lives? It's the power of the Holy Spirit right here at the church. It doesn't matter if it's a big church or a little church. It's the church for the word of God. It's being taught. It's so the word of God is being preached. It's where the word of God is being delivered. That's why we want everybody in Sunday school. We want everybody in, in, in Bible study. We, we want everybody at church. Because, you know, I can tell what members are not in Bible school, even during the pandemic, even while we're online only. I can tell what members were listening. It's in their character. It's how they carry themselves. Is how they fall out over little or nothing. When you have the word in you, the word strengthens you. The word gives you power. The word gives you hope. Jesus fixed this for us a long time ago. I'm closing now. Jesus fixed this for us a long time ago on a skull hill called Calvary. He made the church a reality for us. Over 2,000 years ago, Jesus took a stick. Jesus took a cross. He was committed to the end. He marched up a skull hill called Calvary. He made the church a reality for us. Whether we are sick, he, we can come to the church. Whether we are ill, we can come to the church. What can wipe away our sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. His blood flowed from Calvary's hill. It was on a skull hill called Calvary. Over 2,000 years ago. That my Lord and your God. He died on that hill. They killed him on that hill. Mean men killed my Lord. And mean men killed my God. On a skull hill called Calvary. They took him off the cross. Laid him in a barber tomb. It was a barber tomb because it didn't need it too long. It was a barber tomb because earlier that third 
yesterday morning. He got up with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. My Lord, my God, Jesus himself, the righteous son of God, the heart torn in the valley, the bright, bright morning star, the, the head of the church. He got up with all power. Jesus the Christ, he got up with all power. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. Do you know him? He's the son of God. His name is Jesus. Mary's oldest child. His name is Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. That same Jesus is sitting on the right hand of the Father, making intercession for you and me. And every time we confess our sin, he blesses us. He intercedes for us. He, we confess our sin. He pleads our case for us. That same Jesus who caught a cloud and got out of here. He's going to catch a cloud and come back in here. And he's coming to get a church without a spot or wrinkle. That same Jesus who left here on a cloud. He won't be back in a limousine. He'll be back on a cloud. And he will stop in midair. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. And those who remain will be caught up with him in midair. And the Bible says we will forever be with the Lord. Thank God for Jesus. I said thank God for Jesus. He made a way out of nowhere. He gave us a revelation of heaven right here at the church. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. You ought to come to Jesus. Just as you are. You've tried it. You've tried her. You've tried him. And some of you've tried them. I recommend Jesus. The righteous son of God. The door is open. Will you come? Come on. Come on to Jesus. Come on to Jesus. While you have time. He is waiting. Come on to Jesus. The door is open. If you never received Jesus as your personal Savior, this is your moment. This is your chance. This is your opportunity. Come on to Jesus. Come on, come on. Come on to Jesus. He will help you. He will help you. While you, while he's waiting. While the blood is just running warm in your body. He's waiting with arms wide open. Come on. Come on to Jesus. If you've never received Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, would you bow your head with me and invite him into your life? Just repeat this simple prayer with me, trusting that Jesus is the Son of God, that he died and rose for your sins. Just say these words, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. We believe if you pray this prayer honestly, believing the story of Jesus Christ's death, burial, and resurrection, we believe that you're born again, you're saved, and you're on your way to heaven when you die. There are others of us that are present that are saved and know what they, we are, but for some reason or the other, we slip in and out of sin. We slip in and out of depression. I want to pray with you and pray for you. Lord Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we come before you, Father God. We ask you to rescue. We ask you to renew. We ask you to save. We ask you to deliver everyone in the sound of my voice. Bless us, Father God, that we will walk away from sin, that we'll hold close to you. Lord, the psalmist said it is good to draw near to God. 
thank you for allowing us to draw near to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. If you're here today and you don't have a church home, I recommend the New Beginning Church where Jesus is the center of attention and the main attraction. I recommend the New Beginning Church where Jesus Christ is the captain of the ship. If you're present, you can come and join today. If you're listening by way of internet, inbox me and let me know that you want to be a part of the New Beginning Church. We'll be glad to celebrate with you and have you as a part of our church. Well, we thank God for who he is and what he has already done. We serve the awesome and the amazing God. Yes, he has truly blessed us one more again. He has blessed us to come one more time and hear from him. We serve the awesome and the amazing, the amazing God. It is now offering time. It is now time to give to the Lord through tithes, offerings, and sacrificial gifts. It is an opportunity to give to the Lord, to return to the Lord what the Lord has blessed us with. If you need an envelope, raise your hand way up in the air and you will be served. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand way in the air up in the air and you will be served if you need an envelope please raise your hand and you will be served Yahoo.com. 
lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. You can give by Zelle. Or you can mail in your offering, your tithes, your support by way of New Beginning Church, P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. That's P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. Thank you so much for your gifts. Father God, we thank you for every gift. We thank you for every giver. We thank you, Father God, for blessing us. Now, Lord, we pray and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. And thank God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Let me thank you for coming out today. I want to ask all the visitors to stand. If you would stand where you are. If you're online, let us know you're visiting. Amen. Hallelujah. We're glad to, to have our visitors with us today. We have visitors who will start from this side and go to that, that side. Just say who you are, who invited you, and we're glad that you came. Sister Woods, amen. Thank you, Sabrina. Thank you for being a part of our service. The young lady in the middle aisle, the one that's looking around at everybody else. Amen. Giselle Oliphant, thank you so much. She's always giving her support here at the New Beginning Church. And the young lady, who's the sportsperson for, for the 20 people in our way? Yes, ma'am. Come on, sportsperson. Uh, yes. Amen. Thank you so much for coming. Amen. Does anybody else in, the, in the, the multitude have anything to say? Anybody else? Anybody else have any? Yes, sir. Go ahead. You look like you got something on your heart. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Thank you so much uh, uh, for coming. Thank you so much for being here. Yes, sir. You have something to say. Tell us what you have to say. Your sister. Who is your sister? Lulu? I mean, Lulu? <laughs> Thank you so much for coming, my brother. Thank you so much. Thank you all for, for inviting them, and thank you for coming. Please, ma'am, please, sir. Please, ma'am, please, sir, fill out the visitor's card before you leave. There's a visitor card there. Fill out the visitor card. If you're in separate homes, please fill out a separate uh, visitor's card. We, I want to call you and talk to you about your experience, and I want to invite you constantly to the New Beginning Church. Amen. I also want to invite you to be a member of the New Beginning Church. Thank you. Young man in the back, young man in the far back with the gray suit on, with the stripes on his tie. I want to ask him to stand. Young man in the far back. This is uh, Reverend Carl Evans. This is Reverend Carl Evans. He's a very close friend of mine. Uh, we, um, whenever, whenever you see see us cycling, he's the guy that's that's forcing me to go to the next five miles. And so we want to thank him for being him. Reverend Evans, you want to come up here and say hello to us? Come on, come up here and say hello to us. Praise God. We uh, thank God for another privilege to be in the house of the Lord. It was indeed a blessing to be here. I just want to I bring you greetings on behalf of the pastor, uh, Dr. Marcus D. Cosby of the Wood Avenue Baptist Church. It is an honor to just be here to uh, fellowship with you all on this morning. Uh, my friend Matthew Davis has done an excellent job. I've seen what God can do. I believe in miracles. When I look at Matthew Davis, I know there's nothing impossible in God. You will do 50 miles this coming weekend for sure. This coming week, you. My God, I mean, Brother Dick's just laying all out. I mean, he just loves that. My, my, my. You got 50 miles to do this week and one day, my brother. We're going we're gonna to run up and down some hills on the cycle this week. I must get you back. Amen, amen. Thank you, Reverend Evans, for being here. Thank you for being such a friend. Thank you for being such a friend and being a part of our service on today. For those of you who, who have come physically, those of you who have come to the building today, I have gifts for you. I have gifts for those of you who have physically come to the building today. Uh, an unknown donor, well, I know, but an unknown donor has, has donated 
some gift cards for those of you who came physically to the building. They donated some gift cards, and uh, I'd like to have the privilege of giving them to you as you walk out the door, but they have donated gift cards uh, to you today, and I'm just so excited that God has, has blessed us. God has, has blessed us. And I want to, I want to give every young person over 18, will you stand every young person over 18? I want to see what my numbers look like before I make this commitment. Under, under 18, under 18. I can see through that mask, brother. You ain't that pretty under that mask. <laughs> if you're under 18, okay. Sister Paul, Sister Paul is old as Adam and she raises her hand. So every person, is every person standing that's under 18? Okay, I, I think I have enough. Every person under 18, I'm gonna give you two gift cards. If you're under 18, thank you so much. I just wanna give you, I just feel like you special today. That brother in the white G-Star shirt on, he tried to, he tried to fool me. He think the mass fools me. I said, that dude, that ain't no, he was 18 when I was 18. <laughs> Amen, so thank you so much for coming. I wanna give you gift cards as you leave the room. Uh, very close friend of mine just like blessing our church, and I wanna make sure that we pass out those blessings. And uh, I told that person that we were having our grand interest today, and that person, uh, went about went about and picked up gift cards for you. I want to say thank you to that person publicly. Thank that person. Why don't we thank that person for blessing all of us, all of us in the room? Amen. I have I have a few more announcements. Doing next year, um, I won't ask who all did your Bible listening this year. I won't ask that question. Uh, don't raise your hand. Don't give me an excuse. Don't say anything so people won't know that you have not been doing your Bible listening. But uh, we're, gonna, we're going to alter your Bible listening this coming year. We're gonna, we're gonna make it a, a little different. Um, our, daily, our daily weekly reading, our daily weekend reading that comes up to our Sunday school, we're going to read that daily week, weekly reading starting January 1. Uh, we're gonna read it in journal, the daily weekly reading. So at the end of the year, everybody should have a notebook with everything that happened, plus your, it, it prepares you for your Sunday school lesson. And Brother Miles and Brother Whitlock just jumping for joy. And they just, they just think that's such a great thing. They just think that's such a great thing to So our daily reading will be what we will journal uh, in 2022 if the Lord says the same. But we will continue our daily Bible listening. We'll listen to the whole Bible in one year. You don't have to journal the Bible. Of course, if the Lord speaks something in your ear, you may want to write it down. But this year, uh, some of you have expressed that it was quite a bit to keep up with your, your Bible listening and journal that Bible listening. I'm looking out the door. I'm not looking at anybody. I'm looking out the door. I'm looking out the door. Um, it was a little tough to journal as you listen to the Bible. So we're going to cut that down to our daily reading. We're going to journal our daily reading uh, in the year of 2022. Uh, we're going to journal our daily reading, but we will continue to listen through the Bible. Listen through the Bible. Pastor Richard Rose and several other pastors have written a book of morning and evening devotions. Uh, we want to pick up that book, and I, I can get them for you. Uh, January the 10th, January the 10th, for 21 days, January the 10th, from, from the 10th to the 30th, it's 21 days, we're going to go through that, that prayer journal, because January is our month of prayer anyway, we're going to go through that prayer journal, and as we go through that prayer journal, we want to make sure that we uh, participate in the Daniel fast. The Daniel fast is in, in Daniel chapter 10. We'll be doing the Daniel fast for 21 days. The name of the book is Fix My Prayer Life. Fix My Prayer Life. The book is $20. 
It's a journal with prayer scriptures, and we will be doing fasting starting January the 10th. We, we always do our fasting anyway. We've gotten away from it uh, for a while because of the pandemic and pre-pandemic. But we want to make sure, we want to make sure that we we get that prayer journal. It is twenty dollars. I need you to pay twenty dollars to get the book, and I'll pick it up for you. If you go online to Amazon, it's a lot more plus taxes and shipping. So uh, let me pick up your book for you. Uh, it's called uh, "Fix My Prayer Life." It's a prayer journal. So January ten, we will begin, and we will end on January the thirtieth. We will we will do it together as a church. And those of you online. Let me know if you need one. I need you to pay $20 for it. Amen. We want to continue to lift up and pray for uh, Brother Brandon's wife, Reverend Brandon's wife. We're lifting her up in prayer. We'll continue to pray for for um, Betty Funberger. Betty Funberger, we're lifting her up in prayer. Are there any other prayer requests that I, I'm missing? Again? Lydia Lee, Lydia Lee. Dixon the Dixon family. The Dixon family, um, they um, they laid to rest uh, their system on this week, so on last week, Friday. So we want to lift the Dixon family, the Dixon and the Irvin family up. This is Sister, Sister Irvin and Brother Dixon's sister. We want to lift their family. And we certainly want to lift their 99-year-old mama. We want to lift her up. Is she 100? She what? As a win. I can't hear you. September 28th. Man, how did I miss that? 100 years. We want to lift her up. We want to lift up. Wow. Hallelujah to the Lamb. It shows, it shows Sister Davis that it is possible. Amen. She put me in the grave this morning in Sunday school. Didn't she? she thought I wasn't listening. She says, this is what she said. Sister Oliver, this is what she said. She said, she said, when Pastor Davis leave off the scene, these children are going to take care of her. That's what she said. And that's all right. When I leave off the scene, guess what? I'm going to be doing a lot better than she's doing down here. Amen? And, and I don't even want to come back. So I'm going to do whatever I can to take care of her down here. At least she did give me credit for taking care of her down here. I mean, what do you think about that, Sister Steve? That's a shame, man. Lord, have mercy. So, uh, so Sister Davis just admired uh, seasoned saints and how they are uh, becoming of age. And she tells everybody that gets in their 90s, you got to make 100. You have to make, make 100. So, uh, to the Dixon family, to the Irvin family, thank you for not worrying your mama to death and allowing her to make 100. That's a celebration, amen. That's a celebration. Amen. Thank God. Thank God for, for that. Why don't you stand and be dismissed?
and the value of the experience called church. Bless us to leave this place and continue to have some church. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling. Now unto him the only wise and only true God. Now unto him be power, be glory, and dominion. Until we meet again, let us join by saying, God bless you. God keep you. We are uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus says, In I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. John 12, 32. You are dismissed. Everybody's coming this way to receive your gifts.